I think he should be grateful that I even considered the option of knitting him a sweater after he said that this yarn looked like ground beef. Man, I'm so happy to be back with another podcast because I was sick for like two out of four weeks in September and at some point it was just it felt like everything was against me against me recording against me working against me knitting against me going out but finally finally i'm feeling much better even though my voice is kind of raspy but but still i'm really happy to get into it So first, I wanted to show you some of the yarns that I got in September, and it's not a lot because I'm not really kind of a yarn purchasing enthusiast. I try to buy my yarns intentionally and kind of more project-based, so I don't end up with uh, yarns I have no idea what to do with. I try not to buy yarns because they look pretty or because I like the color or they feel nice. If you like something, and it's pretty to look at, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have it. I hope it makes sense. But I kind of broke my own rule with this yarn. And it's a really special yarn because it's hand dyed by a Ukrainian dyer who doesn't even have a store. Like she just experiments with the yarns and I really, really wanted to support her. We don't have that many hand dyers or like yarn dyers in Ukraine. I know a few stores, but they mostly focus on yarn for like rugs or carpets, so not for knitting. And she has a lot of beautiful colorways. I decided to get this one, which is really kind of jewel toned. I'm not sure what to, what to call it exactly. This is how it looks when it's wind, wound up into a cake. I have about 200 grams of it and it's a super wash fingery merino, but Here's the problem, because I wanted to support her and I just bought this color, as I said, because it wasn't a project-based purchase, I have no idea what to make from it. I have an idea to maybe at some point pair it with like a solid color mohair. I'll have to think about it. That's, again, that's what I'm talking about. I wish I, I knew what to make from it, but I don't. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. And next, I also got this yarn, which is Drops sky it's an alpaca blend and it has this chain construction you would call it and i actually bought it for the color because i really wanted to find a dark green or like forest or bottle green that is not too bright but at the same time not too kind of hockey or washed out and I realized how hard it is to find a specific color when you're looking online because all of the colors, usually all of the colorways are really distorted. But I was able to find this color in Drops Sky because one of the yarn stores that I saw on Instagram, they posted a picture of this yarn in like natural light. And as soon as I saw it, I just decided that that's exactly what I'm looking for. That's the color I was kind of dreaming about. And I'm going to make a pair of throw pillows for my bed. I just need this green in my room, which is my bedroom slash living room slash dining room because it's a studio. But yeah, I'm happy I found the color I was looking for. And I actually already chose a stitch pattern I'm gonna use for the throw pillows. I have five balls and I think it's gonna be enough. I really hope so. In my last podcast, I also forgot to mention two of the yarns that I bought in Copenhagen and the first one is this silk mohair, it's Gepard Garn Kit Sita Tweed, and it's this beautiful heathery brown silk mohair. I got two balls of it and I'm planning to use it to make a simple shawl. If everything goes well, I might actually release a tutorial or like a pattern for it for free, just so you can try it. And the reason it's in a cake as opposed to in an original ball is because this yarn just kept unraveling, the ball just kept falling apart and tangling on itself. So I decided if I want to save it, I'll have to cake it up because otherwise if it, if my hair gets tangled, there's not really much you can do about it. So kind of saved it. So now it's in, in a cake. I also got this Isaiah alpaca yarn. It might be one of the most like luxurious and soft yarns I've ever touched. 
it's really really kind of buttery and it has this beautiful halo it's just 100 percent lace weight alpaca and i bought it because i wanted to make either a shetland shawl or like an estonian lace shawl but i ended up doing something else from it it's a free pattern called drum it fell on the floor <clears throat> but it's this garter stitch shawl with just a simple lace detail at the border and i'm done with the garter part i just need to make the border i can't wait to finish it but i'm pretty sure the the lace border will take me a long time i've only done two pattern repeats and i have like 40 more to go so you know any minute now <laughs> but in any case i really recommend this pattern it's well written especially for a free pattern i also added a strand of cashmere to the alpaca on its own, this cashmere is pretty much unusable. It's way too thin and breaks really easily, but when I paired it with the alpaca, it added kind of additional softness to it and like more body. As I said, I just can't wait to finish the shawl. So I have one more work in progress to show you. These are my Summer Memories socks that I talked about in my last podcast. Well, one of the socks. And what I forgot to mention in the last podcast is that I'm using much thicker yarn than suggested in the pattern. I think the pattern calls for more of a like usual sock weight yarn and I'm using three millimeter needles for it. I haven't gotten really far this month just because as I said I was quite sick and I wasn't really in a headspace for color work. And the reason I chose a thicker yarn is because I want them to be more of a Christmas stocking style socks and I'm just slowly knitting along on them. I I hope I will be able to finish them by Christmas. Also, remember how I said I would start the Alfred sweater next week? I haven't done anything on it. I made a gauge swatch, but then I lost it. And since then, I just, I just kind of ignored this project. The yarn has been sitting in my yarn basket. I have the pattern printed out. I'm all ready to start, but something is just kind of holding me back. I don't know how to explain it. It's probably how UFOs are made when like the project is like right there, but you just don't want to knit on it and or you don't want to start it. Is there such thing as like an unbegun project or like a mental UFO, something you want to start in your head, but you just don't? I know that I only need to make either another gauge swatch or just find the one I lost. It's probably I don't know, like a meter away from me. I just need to find it. Let me know if you have the same issue with some projects. I really want to know because, again, I have no explanation for it. So in conclusion, since I talked about the Alfred sweater, I knit exactly zero centimeters on it. And for my US audience, zero centimeters is approximately zero inches. So when I was gathering all of my finished objects for September, I realized that all of them are just stockinette, but they are all quite different. So instead of calling it a boring stockinette podcast, I'm going to call it a knit stitch party podcast. So the first thing I wanted to show you is this throw pillow. Remember I talked about drops bouquet yarn in my previous podcast? Well, I think it was the beginning of a beautiful friendship because I really like this throw pillow. It took me just an evening to knit. I held the yarn double and used five millimeter needles. And I just made like a stockinette tube that was a little bit smaller in circumference than my pillow because I wanted it to kind of stretch on the pillow. And when I was about done, when I was able to kind of fit my pillow in this tube, at least around here, I close it with Kitchener with the pillow inside. I know I could have just added a zipper to it, but I just couldn't be bothered. As I said, I was kind of sick. So I just wanted a win, you know, for that day. I just wanted a finished object, which, which I got. I really like this pillow. And also my cat is in love with this pillow. She just makes biscuits on it all the time. And 
with the leftovers of the yarn because it didn't use all of the yarn I had. I made myself some beautiful slippers. Let me oh, pull them up. So here they are. I am absolutely in love with the slippers, which is a weird sentence to say out loud, I understand, but I kind of am. And also don't ask me why I have a professional shoe last at home. I just do. Just I have no explanation for it. But I decided I really wanted to make boucle slippers. I saw some on Instagram, but I didn't use a specific pattern. I just kind of know how to make those uh, double layered slippers. The construction is really weird. Let me show you. So it looks kind of a pantyhose, a pair of child's pantyhose, but then you close it at the top with like a Kitchener or a mattress stitch. And then you turn them one inside the other and you have a slipper. I am going to add a sole to it and also like an insole for more like sturdiness. I already made a pair of similar slippers for my boyfriend last year. And the only downside was with his slippers is that I added a leather sole to them. I used a thrifted piece of leather and unfortunately it had the most <laughs> disgusting gummy like sticky leather dye so every time he tried to wash them or like clean them or maybe he stepped into something wet he just started bleeding this like disgusting black dye so I think for these ones I'm gonna avoid this mistake and try to either find ready-made soles or at least use a piece of leather that is not washed I'll, I'll figure something out but they do need soles because because since it's boucle, it will catch on any piece of fluff or dust or cat hair in my home. And I don't want it to get dirty really quickly. So I'll have to figure out the sole situation. Also, let me know if you would like a tutorial or instructions on how to make these slippers. I will be happy to share. It's really not that complicated and it's pretty customizable. So let me know. And continuing with the finished objects, I also made terrazzo neck pattern from Petit Knit. I was just kind of browsing through the patterns I already have to make something again not complicated so I can be sick and still knit. So I found this pattern that I already had and I made a terrazzo neck before and I gifted it to my friend so I wanted one for myself. I used a stash cashmere yarn that I have it's a mystery yarn. I just know it's cashmere, but I bought it years ago and it originally came in a cone which had the name of the manufacturer and like the fiber composition and the name of the yarn on there. But I lost the cone and I don't remember where I bought it. So I just know it's cashmere. <laughs> and I decided it was time to make it up into something because I want to clear up some space for newer like yarns I haven't tried before and for my new projects so it was it was time and I'm halfway there I have enough of it left for like a, a hat or maybe another terrazzo neck and maybe the next time I'm gonna make it I will tweak the pattern a little bit to maybe add some cables or some lace instead of stockinette to make it more kind of interesting I'll see and now, something we all have been waiting for, especially me. I finished the big boy sweater. I did it. It's, it's huge. It's extremely huge. It can fit maybe two me's, but I am so glad I finished it be before October. I had some problems with it. I actually ran out of yarn. I remember I told you I had... 11 balls <laughs> which turned out to be not enough i was halfway done with the body when i realized i only have two balls left and one ball gave me like this much of a length so i needed more yarn and of course naturally i wasn't even like remotely surprised the only store that sells sadness garn in ukraine did not have this color but they did have regular Sunday, not double Sunday, but regular Sunday in this color. So I did get 
usual like thinner sunday in this gray color and i just wound it into a two ply because you know double sunday sunday it's basically the same yarn so it worked okay the color was actually not off even though it's different yarn different lot it was basically the same but to kind of disguise the texture difference because there was a little bit of a difference i did something along the lines of like helical knitting i think it's called where you do one round from one ball and then another round from another ball and you kind of make the gradient change between the yarns so anyway it worked out fine he loves the sweater i just need to block it and i hope he will be wearing it a lot and as i said at the beginning he should be thankful that i even considered the idea of knitting it because he he makes fun of me all the time <laughs> he makes fun of my of my knitting and uh, of my color choices but it's all it's all good it's a it's a loving relationship so we're fine but he did say that my project bag looked like ground beef real thing that happened but yeah i have one last finished object to show you you actually already see it here i finished my blanket i'm super happy about it it's not as big as i would have liked but the store i bought drop snow from only had eight balls left in the same color and lot and because of my issue with this t-shirt where i bought the same color but the lot was so different that the color was way 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 off i decided not to risk it and just buy whichever they whichever quantity they have left and just go with it and see how much length and how much like width it will give me in terms of my blanket but i really really love it and in the end i decided that <laughs> I will not make the rainbow square kind of a center piece. I will just randomly add granny squares to it because this way it looks kind of intentionally unintentional. <laughs> I'll call it that. And I really like how it looks. Plus it's, it's super, super warm. I just needed this kind of a warm, weird granny chic blanket. I also like that it adds like color and vibrancy to my otherwise pretty beige room. So I'm really happy I'm finally done with it. Okay, maybe I'm not done. Maybe at some point I will buy even more drop snow to make it even bigger, but we'll see. We'll see. Probably, probably not. <laughs> I don't want it to get too heavy because this yarn is quite heavy. Maybe it's not that knitting related, but I bought myself this wooden ball or decoration or vase i don't know how to call it exactly but i just really love it i store my knitting notions my small like knitting notions there and i just really love how that looks so i think that's all i wanted to show you today just the things i worked on in september thank you so much for sticking around especially until the end I really appreciate every comment and every feedback that I get. It means so much to me. I'm sorry that this podcast maybe wasn't that groundbreaking or interesting, but that's how this month went for me. And I think sometimes when you are not feeling that well or you're overwhelmed with work and like family stuff, you just need to have like a stockinette party or like a knit stitch party to make you feel better. And please let me know in the comments, as usual, what you are knitting on, what is your current project, maybe something you are planning to make in the near future. I was really happy to finally talk to you, and I wish you the loveliest day. Bye.